Hi, I'm Ginger Rankin with Busy Hearing and Company, and we're here to do another session of Trunk Treasures. And today I'm really excited because I have my mother and my father with me. And I've always wanted to do um, an interview with them because they've been Christians for the majority of their life, and we just have a lot of things that I've always wanted to have them share with the public and uh, so we want to just get right into that today and so I welcome my mother this is my mother Loretta Carruthers hi mom hi Ginger glad to have you here glad to be here and this is my father Ken Carruthers hi dad Ginger good to have you on here today thank you ma'am <laughs> I want to start out today by um, reading and we went over this already mom and dad but um, when I first created, when I created my first blog for Izzy Carey and Company, I wrote several little articles that were dedicated to my mother and father because I had just written Manifesto Before the Cock Crows, which spoke a lot about the elders of our day. And so I want to read this, a couple little articles here before we get started. I never imagined when I was young and growing up that I would in my adult life live where people would steal and murder children. I cringe every time I hear of another child molested or abused in any fashion. Children being murdered before they're even given the chance to take their first breath from the womb. It's frightening to me how things have changed. Yes, as a believer I have rights in the Lord to be blessed. I don't believe I have the right to close my eyes or my heart, to shut my mouth or my prayers, or to harden my heart to the cries of the innocent who have no one to defend or protect them and their rights for life. God forgive us for looking the other way and change us, Lord. Amen. Now, the reason I want to share that with you is because we are coming from a different... <laughs> time, aren't we, wouldn't you say, yes. Mom and Dad? Yes. Okay, and here's the other article I wanted to share. And this is a salute to the patriarchs, which I consider my mother and father to be. My heart daily overflows with honorary memories of many from my past who have now gone on. I have nothing but fond deep loving recollections of those from former generations mm -hmm. ones who i was blessed to have had placed in my life i can't wait to see them again and not only for the sake of seeing them again but mom and dad for the privilege of being able to express how much more i appreciate their standards for life now yeah. those coming up don't in this day don't have many of them, mentors, fathers, elders, or leader examples to, to look back on like we did Amen. growing up. Amen. We are living in a time when the face of the earth has changed so drastically. I pray to God for the sake of my children, grandchildren, and future generations Amen. that somehow things will return to the pattern that made for us such favorable living conditions. Yes. God bless the earth and the inhabitants thereof. And that may sound silly to you, but we are we really do remember a different day, don't we? Yes. yes. Yeah, we really we do. do. Yes. And it was a good day, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. And there are good things about today too. Yes. But for sure, for certain, and I think that you can agree with us, things are changing and they're changing um, in, a, in a really severe way. Amen. And so then I wanted to read this one last thing to you, and then we'll move on. This is a tribute to my mother and my father. My father, my hero. And I said this about him because in the book, the Lord really pointed out to me that we have a generation today who has not been fathered. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the generation under me has been brought up without fathers. Yes. And it makes such a difference 
in the life of a child to have a father. Whether it's a little girl or a little boy, it really does make a difference. And so this is a tribute to my father. Oh, my father, my hero. I can't speak of my father without tears. I will today. I owe him everything, all, my, both my mother and father. All that I am today is because of the role that, he, that they chose to play in my life growing up. My dad was far from perfect. My mom was far from perfect. <laughs> but they're both perfect in my eyes today. And every single time the doors were open to the church I grew up in, we were there. Uh, church people were our family members and our biological family members. We were all so close together. Amen. We had a tremendous closeness back then with family and church family. Mm -hmm. uh, my father and mother are honored by all who know them. They are the most rock-solid people I know in the faith. Their faith has never waned once over these many years. They are true standard bearers for God and His ways. I'm so thankful that my parents throughout their married years never gave a split second's thought to divorce. I just can't say enough about the security and the many benef benefits of a family that never separates itself. None of my family members, aunts, uncles, have divorced. Uh, and these are those that I grew up around um, that were closest to me in my life. We just didn't have divorce in our family. And we didn't, our society wasn't divorce oriented either. It was difficult back in that day to even get a divorce. Right. And it was uh, really frowned upon. It was... Uh, it was a there was a shameful bend to it uh, to to go through a divorce, and I want to just honor my father and mother today for always sticking out through hard times, and believe me, they had hard times. Yes. And uh, but but divorce was never an option. And that's a rare thing in our society today. They just celebrated their. 60th anniversary, I believe it was last year, Mom. Yes. And um, had a beautiful uh, celebration together that their church uh, gave to them as a mm -hmm. gift. Mm -hmm. And it was just beautiful, and they mm -hmm. deserved it. They really <coughs> deserved it. Um, but, my, you know, I want to say this. Uh, my dad, uh, he took us, when he, you know, he was a present father when we were growing up. He played with us. Um, he took us ice skating, he took us sledding. My mom and dad always saw to it that we were uh, socially involved in church. Uh, we, we, we were just, we had such good times together, didn't we? Yes, we did. And on Sundays I remember that we would go to church and when it was spring or summer, it was warm enough, mom would, you'd pack lunch mm -hmm. and we would go find a creek somewhere. and. <laughs> We'd spend the afternoon uh, waiting in the, just, you know, time, time, time. We always spent a lot of time together as a family. And uh, what a difference it makes Amen. in children's lives. And there's so many children today who are suffering from broken homes, broken families, divorce, and so on. So I just, I don't condemn anybody for uh, having gone through a divorce today. We don't condemn anybody, Amen. but we certainly do pray for everybody in our society day, today who is in one way or another affected by that, by divorce, because it really has had a severe rippling effect on our society, I believe. Yes. Yes. And so I'm just so excited to have uh, my parents with me today, and we're just going to relax and move right on into the questions that we've prepared to share with you today and we hope you enjoy our time that we have to spend with you as well. Um, Mom and Dad, you, you've been in the Lord for a very long time. Yes. Both of you. Yes. And I wanted to ask you first of all uh, to share with us, if you would, your uh, born-again experience. How were you and when were you 
born again, Mom. Well, I didn't grow up in a religious family. Didn't grow up in a family that went to church. And so, I think about when I was 10, I went to a vacation Bible school. And then when I was a teenager, I went to uh, Sunday school and church. And, of course, it was being from the South, I was Baptist. But I never came to know the Lord. And, and I met Ken, and we got married and traveled to Iowa. Mm -hmm. And uh, where you stayed. Yeah, where we <laughs> stayed for 50-some years. And uh, it became home. Yeah, it did. We went to church at the First Reformed Church in Evansdale, Iowa for, I went there for 26 years. And I thought I knew the Lord. I was baptized, sprinkled, but I didn't. I had no idea what the mm -hmm. Lord was all about, even though I went was in church all the time, in Sunday school, women's group. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know anything about the Lord, about the scriptures. Do you want me to tell about when I got saved? Um, or later. <laughs> you, yeah, go ahead and... and Elucidate. Yeah. In uh, 1979, we, which we'll talk about later, I had a, we had a real change in our life. And we moved from Evansdale, Iowa to Webster City, Iowa. We went to a charismatic church with... Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> holy rollers! <laughs> Not the Dutch Reform, right? Mother? No. Mm -hmm. And... 1979 or early 1980, I came to know the Lord in a real and personal way. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I've never been the same since. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Dad, you. you were, what was your born-again experience, your first? Well, I mean, there's only one. So yeah, what was well, your born-again experience? We, yeah. we had a regional missionary who was there to establish churches, and he established our church. And when we, the, the church wasn't completely built yet, but this was a couple of years before I got saved. And uh, uh, this one Sunday night, we were meeting under the cement steps that go, went upstairs to the sanctuary as a youth group. And uh, I had fought being, becoming a Christian. It, you know, I just, I just couldn't make myself do that. Two years I fought that. And this night, the pastor called out, and I, I just, I melted inside. I just, I couldn't hold back. I thought about it, and the next thing I know, I was on my knees on the floor. And he came over, and he put his hand on me. I never will forget that day, because that day changed. When I got up from that floor, I was a new person. All that burden I'd been carrying in my heart. And the shame and the guilt for the things I did that my mama didn't know about, they were gone. And I'm not saying that from that time I was perfect because I wasn't. Yeah. But I, that's when I was saved and that's when my life changed. Right. Wow. Amen. Awesome, Dad. Yep. So, Mom, what? Uh, share with us just a, a little bit of your uh, background, Your, I mean your childhood, your family background growing up. Okay. I am from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. My parents were sharecroppers. Uh, very, very poor sharecroppers. My dad was an alcoholic, which made us even poorer because any time there was any money, it went for whiskey. Uh, he was a severe father. He beat us quite often. Uh, I grew up hating my dad, absolutely hating him, my mother very well, but she couldn't very well for letting us live in the mess that we were in, but she couldn't very well go out and get a divorce because she had eight children and we were sharecroppers and there's no way she could get a job with eight little children. And uh, I didn't get to go to school very often because work came before school. When I was 16, my brother, who was two years older than I, was killed in an accident. And so that I finished out that year of school, and the next year I had to drop out completely and do the barn work. 
because my dad had got so bad in his alcoholism. And um, it was pretty bad. Growing up was not a good experience no, for you? No, not in any means. Mm -hmm. I was ridiculed in school for I didn't have nice clothes to wear. So my life growing up was not good by any means. Thank God it got better. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Dad? Yes. Your childhood and your family background. Your How many siblings did you have? And well, I have four sisters. Yes? One, one of which passed away, passed passed away when she was about nine months old. Mm. I thought the world of her. Broke my heart. Yeah. But. And your your family. Um, anything you want to say about your your family? When you were growing up, when you were young, or. Well. Your dad was. What did he do? My dad worked at John Deere's. Uh, and he did very well there. He got promoted as the war came and things grew and. He did very well there. He retired from there. But he smoked so much that he developed cancer in his lungs and had a very, very rough time. Died when he was 70, 73 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Very young. Mm -hmm. Now your dad, your mom was uh, a believer? Yes. And yes. your dad was not? Was not. For most of his life, he was not, right? Yeah, just at the end, we had a pastor who really cared and came out and talked to him. Right. And he got saved right there at home. Right. And he did go to church a few times, I think. Yeah. But, but all your... He uh, changed. Yeah, your your brothers, or sisters. <laughs> your sisters, uh, you you kind of all grew up in the church. Yep. Yeah. We did. Mm -hmm. And and you had a lot to do in the church as you got older yeah. and... Helps never different offices. Mm -hmm. Sang in the choir. Mm -hmm. How was, was, was childhood easy for you? Well, there were good better things. than for a whole lot of people. Yeah. But my dad was pretty severe, mm -hmm. and if I didn't do something right, I got my butt whipped. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You got in trouble. I, yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> you get <in> big trouble. <laughs> They laid down the law, right, Dad? Yeah, he yeah did. the law in the but house. Thank, at that time. Thankfully, he was the same to all of us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. I think Ken can't remember all of this, but I think he had a wonderful childhood. His folks <laughs> provided him with uh, things to do 4 H with or mm -hmm. FHA. Yeah. He had cows that he showed and he had rabbits that he showed and yeah. he had a paper route when he was ten years old and made his own money and when he was 16, he started working at the A&P and worked from the time he was about 10 years old. But he, his family was a wonderful family. We had wonderful times together. Yeah, we did. They really did. I had wonderful in-laws. Amen. They became my family. As we were all, yeah, yes. we'll get yeah. into that too more. And as we said already in the article on the blog that... Uh, our church family, oh, yes. and our immediate family was really priority, and I think in almost all of your, see, I grew up around my father's family yes. full time. We lived two houses <laughs> from them for most of our life, and um, and the whole family was so close. All the siblings, yes, uh, all the nieces and nephews, the grandchildren. We. We spent so much time yes. together. We were just one big family, right. mm -hmm. and so yes, that 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 was there, and it was huge. It meant a lot yeah. to us. And and through the years, even our families now have been. Uh, we stayed together for, yeah. for the most part until just a few years ago. Yeah. And now we're all. Some of us have scattered different places across the the nation here, and it's a real switcheroo for us. Okay, let's move on. Um, so we've had all that closeness in, in, our, in our coming up. Mm -hmm. And um, Mom, I wanted to ask you, though, about your, uh, your mother and father as far as faith. They didn't have any. Okay, they, you may have mentioned that, too. Yeah. You didn't grow up in a, no. in a Christian home. <clears throat> okay. No. 
they did become Christians later on in life. Mm -hmm. My dad was delivered instantly from alcohol and smoking cigarettes and became a real strong Christian. And my mom probably was a Christian, but we didn't know it. Mm -hmm. She was ended up being my idol. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that, but she was a very wonderful person. Mm -hmm. And I admired. loved her as much as my own mom. Yeah. You admired her. I, we all yes. were children of my yes. Yeah. She was a, a strong, strong woman. Yes. Very strong. Two o'clock every morning she was up preparing breakfast so he could mm -hmm. be in the fields at four. Mm -hmm. and she lived till she was 91 mm -hmm. with a good memory. Okay, so um, so our lives were, were uh, as far as our life now we're talking mm -hmm. about, um, I had two siblings. I had a brother that was, how many months younger than me, Mom? 17? 17. 17. 17 months younger. His name was Robert. We called him Bobby. And then I have a younger sister who was seven and a half years younger than yes. myself. And, um, and we were a very close family. So mom and dad, so you've been living your life um, all those years up to that, this point we're going to talk about um, in your faith. And we were all going to that uh, same church there, yes. Dutch yes. Reform. We've gone there all of our childhood. Yes. Um, and so July 5th, 1975 came. And something major happened in our our family's life. Mom, you want to uh, address that? Or yes. Just tell them what happened. Well, our son Bobby, he had severe scoliosis, and uh, a friend of his came. Well, he had a very bad hearing problem also, but a friend of his came home from the service, and he wanted to go out have a good time and I knew that he drank a lot of beer and stuff and I was very concerned with Bobby going out with him but Bobby was 20 years old and I couldn't say you can't go so he went and about 12 o'clock that night we got a knock on our door and it was the police and they were telling us that Bobby had drowned and of course we were just absolutely devastated we just could not believe that out. Yeah, Ken passed out, and I did a lot of bawling. And uh, you want me to? Well, I, I I'll just share that uh, I you know this is my experience of it. I I was married, just newly married at the time. Um, had been married about six months, and and I'll just never forget in the middle of the night, uh, someone had come knocking at our door, and my husband came up stairs to my room and my uncle was with him and told me the news and I tell you it was just mm -hmm. unbearable just totally and completely uh, something that when it hit us I don't think we knew how we were going to make it no. past the next minute no. um, it, it was such a shock and such so devastating he yes. how old was he mother 20 20 years old. He just turned 20 on May 31st. Mm -hmm. And he, he went. And so, <laughs> wow, a test of your faith. Yes. And um, talk to me, I want you to share, well first of all let's back up because we, we ran through these questions before we actually did the videotaping and it was, we should have taped, taped it then because it was so <laughs> natural. but. But that's okay because, but I want to back up, Mom, and I want to talk about uh, because we we went into this in depth mm -hmm. uh, before about the bullying thing yeah. for Bobby because uh, my brother uh, was hard of hearing. My brother and my sister both had hearing yes. impairments, and it really did wreak havoc yes. in their lives mm -hmm. uh, socially in school at that time. And being Christians, uh, and really that was the life that we knew. What I, as I said, church was huge. It was like our first family, really almost. Yeah, or as much our family as our family was. And so we that was our standard for living. Well, we went to a public school, and 
as you all know, that is not the standard of the public school system. Right. Right. I would say that it was more so that way back when we were growing up than it is today. Yes. 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 Um, because we used to say the Pledge of Allegiance to yeah. the flag, we used to pray. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, none of that was an issue back in our day. Right. But my brother was uh, highly challenged. I, I mm -hmm. was only a year ahead of him in school, and so I saw him throughout our, our school days, and I saw him how he was bullied. Mm -hmm. And you know as well as I do the issues that we're dealing with in this day, Dad, yeah. with the bullying in schools. And, Amen. and kids are, you know, very young children even who end up taking their own lives just right. because they Absolutely. don't know how to deal with that situation. And this yeah. is kind of what Bobby had fallen into. Um, he was he really couldn't find Christian friends. And we talked about this earlier too, yes. Mother, because yes. uh, when I was growing up, I so wanted the Lord in my life. I, I believed in everything that we learned at that uh, Reformed Church. I loved it. Um, and I wanted to stay in, I wanted to walk that way. As a matter of fact, I got saved. I didn't get saved until 1972. And that was the year that I graduated. Mm -hmm. And in February of that year, I actually got saved after having gone to church in that church all of my life. Yep. And I had so wanted to be saved and know how, how to connect with God. In the Reformed Church, to become a Christian per se, all you had to go was uh, go before the board, the consistory, and answer some questions and stuff. And then you could join the church and... That made you saved. That made you saved. <laughs> well, it doesn't. No, it doesn't constitute no, salvation. It no, it doesn't. It doesn't. And there's a lot of uh, false teaching out there, a lot of misconception about that, because simply we don't read what the Bible says. Right. And isn't that astounding that churches don't teach, many churches don't teach mm -hmm. the gospel. They don't teach the full gospel. It's written right. in the very Word of God. But anyway, back to what we were saying. Um, so my brother was bullied, and I even went through a time, um, I got saved that year I graduated, but I had so wanted friends in our youth group in our church, and sadly, uh, you know, the, the youth group directors, I really appreciated them, and they really ministered to me, but... Um, something was missing because the kids that were in our youth group were not really into following the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got lost as well as a result. And so Bobby mm -hmm. ended up in this situation yes. uh, with worldly things that were going on because he just wanted friends. To be he wanted friends. And sometimes we want to say this to you today because we want anybody listening to us today to keep that in mind when you might yes. be lonely mm -hmm. as a Christian. Don't sacrifice your faith Amen. Um, just to have friendship. Right. Uh, to have friends that are the right kind of friends is so important because, and I, and I told my children growing up, about my brother and, and said, you know, it's not a light thing nope. that you travel down certain roads as a Christian because you may not come back. Certainly. You may get in yeah. with crowds yeah. where yeah. something could happen to you. And I know when I got off track, uh, mm -hmm. wow, I, I, I put myself under drugs, alcohol, uh, I put myself in a position to be raped several times. Uh, my life w ended up being a real mess before it got turned around and straightened mm -hmm. out. And, you know, if we can help anybody today, yeah. avoid that in their lives. Yes. But yes. back to, to your faith, Mom and Dad, and how, tell us how it carried you through that time, because that was a real uh, tragedy, a real strike, like you just said. Well, our church mm -hmm. came to the our rescue. rescue. Uh, we had a couple of friends. Their names were Gilan and Diane Gobelai. 
They were precious people. But they were there. They found out about it. They were there during the night helping us make phone calls uh, and things like that. And the church just surrounded us with their love. Mm -hmm. And uh, our family uh, surrounded us with love. And my yes. sister lived in Iowa at the time, so I had her for my family support. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I think the one thing that helped me most of all was that I knew Bobby was saved because Ken led him to the Lord one night when he was watching a movie about a minister. And for the life of me, I can't remember his name. <laughs> but he was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said after the movie was over, he told Ken, I feel something down in here, Dad. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it is, but it's really strong down in here. And Ken says, well, do you think it's the Lord? And he says, yes, I think it is. And so Ken says, do you want to accept the Lord? And he says, yes, I do. And I mean, it's been 37 years now since then, and I still think about that. And I know that where he's at is with the Lord because I know that he was saved. And that's just been my faith. Some family members made the remark that, well, you act like you didn't even love Bobby. You're not crying all over the place. We didn't need to cry. We knew we uh, cried initially, but we knew where Bobby was, so we could rejoice in that aspect of it. And they thought we were being cool. Well, and if you hadn't had that, like you said, oh mother, my goodness, I wouldn't be able. You to, wouldn't, I it wouldn't. would be just horrifying to think yeah. of how you'd face that, wouldn't it? I wouldn't be alive today, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think about parents who lose their children today and they don't know it and right. I think I don't know how the parents live. Right. I don't know how they bear that burden that they didn't know if their child was saved or right. not and where right. they would go. Right. Or I, even just dealing with death. Yeah. Um, and not even knowing about the Lord. Yes. Just right. just dealing with death in and of itself is right. it's is really a hard thing. Yes. So, Dad, how, how would you say your faith helped you through that time? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't have made it probably if it hadn't been for the right. faith I had. Right. But that was just the beginning. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That was that's just true. the beginning. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Okay, um, so that happened in, in 1975, and so... Uh, we were, well, I became pregnant. I yeah. uh, had been trying to get pregnant for a very long time. And this is really interesting, the timing of the Lord yeah. in our mm -hmm. lives. Because my brother passed away, and I had been trying to get pregnant and couldn't. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, it was just shortly after Bobby passed away, and I learned that I was pregnant. And so the Lord gave us new life Amen. in our Amen. family and something new to focus mm -hmm. on, which isn't that just like God for those of you who know him and how Amen. he works. He, he is so gracious and, and merciful. So it wasn't easy, even with something new, to focus on. It still was very, very difficult. And we had to all press in yes. to our faith. Um, to make it through that. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. so then came 1979, Mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened in that year for you? Well, a lot of things happened in that year and a lot of things that were not good. Um, my youngest daughter became pregnant out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. And to me that was devastating. As a southern girl, that was something that you just did not do. You did not go out and have sex before marriage. And I had taught her the rights and wrongs of sex. And when she became pregnant, I was so devastated that I didn't think I could live. And uh, she was so sick, I had to take her to the hospital and the doctor wouldn't look at her because he found out she was pregnant. So I had to go to a gynecologist and uh, he helped me with her. 
but in August the 10th, I had a beautiful, beautiful granddaughter born. Great. And then also in 1979. I was going to pause right oh, there okay. because I was going to ask you, Mom, because uh, you just said uh, that was devastating yes. to you, and uh, largely because of the way that you believed. Yes. And yes. so what, something changed in you that allowed you um, to accept uh, her oh, and yes. her situation. Yes. How, then go ahead and tell what happened to, to you that, uh, that you were able to accept all of that. Well, by that time, you had moved mm -hmm. to Webster City, and you had got involved with the church, and it was uh, Holy Rollers Church. <laughs> Holy Rollers <laughs> Church. It was a spirit-filled church. <laughs> yes, spirit which we were church. not accustomed they, to. <laughs> um, they raised their hands. They clapped. They had a band. And uh, Ginger kept inviting us to come over, and I says, no, I don't want any part of that. I don't want any of that holy roly stuff. Holy roly stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister-in-law and I discussed it many times because her daughter went over with Ginger and became a holy roller, too.